Hi, um, I've prepared a English version of Financial Tracker today. This is actually the second time sharing my Financial Tracker template after my first version on last year, October. Um, I hope that many of you found my previous template productive. The reason why I brought the brand new template instead of giving the update to the last version is because of the database challenges. The previous one works perfectly fine, I hope, but I wanted to add more functions while still keeping it as simple and easy to use as possible. It may seem a little bit more complex than the last one, and that's why I am adding this video and the written user guide so you could refer on both. This financial tracker consists of five major parts. One, the fixed expenditure items. Two, account and asset management. Three, calendar screen. Four, card. And five, monthly statistics. I have added the timeline in the description box below, so you can jump to the section where you want to refer on. This is the workflow I've planned when I was designing this template. Um, when user first start with this template, he or she needs to write down the fixed expenditure items, account, and card. Then, the calendar screen will be the main page to record the daily purchase history. With the monthly statistic report at the end of each month or at the beginning of the following months. So this is actually um, rotation except for the first one. And now I will start with the fixed expenditure, which is the part one. Fixed expenditure is located at the top of the Financial Tracker 2020 version page under management category. So I've got the idea of this fixed expenditure page from the comment. You need to write down the regularly charging items with fixed price, such as um, subscription fee like YouTube, housing costs, insurance, tuition fees, and yeah, so on. Income example can be the salary or allowance if you are a student. This page is in form of the board view, and now the groups are divided in subcategories. If you want, you can change to category. This will divide the uh, items into in and out, so it's like income and expense, but I would recommend you to use a subcategory division because the fixed expense column can be really long, which is not really good looking. So please add your own items on with regular expenditure and select whether it is an expense or income. If you cannot find um, the right tag, then you can just simply add like another category like KKK and then just click on this create button and you'll create a new one. Right, the price as well. There is one hidden property. Oh my God, I didn't change it yet. Let's still say calendar. So you say calendar relation. The expenditure database is actually linked to the calendar. And you don't have to deal with the calendar relation right now. Since this um, fixed expenditure database is related to the calendar database, you can easily get these values here only by writing in this page once. So you can find this fixed cost under calendar's fixed cost relation property. And I am going to give more detailed explanation about um, selecting fixed cost relation at section 3. As I've mentioned just now, I am hiding this property because it's the property that doesn't need to be handled on fixed expenditure page. Second one is the account management. Account management page is located just below the fixed expenditure page. It has um, the following properties. Account number, balance, initial card relation, card expenses, income, deposit, spending, and withdrawal. Account number is where you can write down your account number. But if you don't want to write it down or make use of it, you can just simply delete it by clicking here, double click with your two fingers if you're using Mac, and you can just delete property. Your balance of each account is calculated and shown down through this formula. To make this formula work correctly, we first need to add a value in this initial part. Initial is the initial balance to start that specific account. Just write down the balance at the moment you start using this financial tracker. Then the formula in the balance again will work like initial plus deposit minus withdrawal minus card expenses. And actually this card may be the check or credit card. A card relation is where the account management is related and connected to the card database, which I'm gonna explain at part four. Um, the amount of money used by the card is related to this account 
because it's a standard chartered card, I think. Yeah, it's a credit card. Um, this is just for an example, but yeah. Anyway, the information from this relation is extracted by this roll-up property card called the card expenses. We are only getting the expense information from the card because we don't actually directly receive money from the card, right? We will either get the money by cash or through account transfer. Here, this is the relation between the account and the calendar screen and getting the income information. So income calendar is used when direct transaction to account is made in the calendar screen. Maybe I can show example somewhere here. Okay, for example, if you have a salary through HSBC directly, then this page will be selecting salary as a item, as an item. And then the deposit, this is a roller function extracting the price property from this purchase, um, income item. So deposit will extract all price show properties from the income calendar relation and sum it up. So income, price show, and sum. Same works in spendings calendar. Spendings calendar should be um, listing out purchased history or items paid through the bill payment or account transfer. And withdrawal roll up will get the price show from the spendings calendar relation and sum it up as well. And this is all for the account management part. The third one is calendar. This is the calendar screen you can see on PC. There are quite a lot of properties, a bunch of nested properties. Your first impression with this page is going to be like, oh my god, why is there so many attributes inside? So there are about like total of 16, but I promise it won't be that complicated. Um, I think many of you who looked on my previous financial tracker would be familiar with this kind of financial screen. This um, current version is almost the same, but with just a bit more properties added. But as I say, don't worry, we are not going to use it all. Seven of them, you don't have to handle it at all in this page. Since we don't, we are not handling with it, I've hit them with all these hide options. So um, with nine properties left, the first property from date to payment here would be um, mandatory all the time. So this five properties, you need to fill it as default. And the way you record your payment history will be slightly different by whether you're writing a summary of the expenditure item fixed cost relation or just a normal item. Okay, so if you're filling in for the fixed expenditure, let me go to okay. Okay, so this is the example of fixed expense writing format. So you don't have to write the price because this fixed cost roll up is bringing the price. I think I can just make it as original value here. Yeah, so this is extracting the value price, the property price from the fixed cost relation. So this is from the fixed expenditure page. So you have you should have um, selected fixed income here as well because salary is in, not out. And since the payment method is selected as bank trans account transfer, bank plus relation is used to get the money. I hope that um, this is clear enough for your understanding. You just need to select what kind of fixed cost item you're referring to as here in, the pro in this property named fixed cost relation. And if you're just writing a normal item, please write down the price here and you can ignore the fixed cost relation. Yeah. For the payment method, you can choose between cash, credit, or check or account transfer. If you're making a direct deposit or withdrawal, whether it is going through ATM or online banking, please record it in the bank plus or bank minus relation here. So deposit will be a positive and uh, withdrawal will be a negative minus here. For some of you who are also referring to the uh, hidden seven properties here, might be curious on why do we have this price property here? Um, actually, this formula is not that complicated. I'm just using an if here. So this is the formula I used. I am using if here. So by using if, then I can add three elements inside. The first item will be the condition. And if the condition is true, it will return the second element. If the condition is false, it is going to return third element. If the fixed cost section 
I mean here, okay. If the fixed cost relation section is empty, it will be showing the value of the price. And if this fixed cost section is not empty, then it is going to show the value of fixed cost. Um, I hope this is also clear enough. Um, section 4 is where you manage your assets such as card and cash. You can add your own card list here by clicking this new button. There are a total of 5 properties in the card database. There is type, calendar expense, account relation, payment made, and usage. When you're making the first setting, please choose the account relation here. Um, cash is not selected, but if I show you the HSBC, there is a account relation here, which is linking to the HSBC block in account management page. So this relation will help you in automatic calculation of the card usage part. Calendar expense is an attribute which shows the sum of all paid history made by this card. The reason why I have usage is for the other databases that has relation with the card database. Um, somehow, I found that I cannot get the roll-up properties from the other database. That's why I've set the exact same value as calendar expense. So I can just use this value in my related page. So this payment made is a relation with the calendar. You don't have to deal this property within this page because inside the calendar page, you've already checked in the attribute. The last one is a monthly record. Monthly record is the major section in the financial tracker. As all payment details continue to accumulate, at the end, it will be very difficult to check my daily, weekly, and monthly usage. The aim of this database is to arrange each month's record neatly. So the user can check and track how much he or she used his or her money in that month. If you open the blog, there are a total of eight properties listed, but you're only going to make use of this two property. You don't have to calculate anything else just yet. The expense list from calendar and income list from calendar. So in expense list property, please select all the items you bought um, related to that month. You're making this record. So from here, I've already selected some items from the January. And in this case, the spending total will sum all this price, will, um, will extract the property price from this relation. Oh, Maybe I should have set it as price show, yeah. From this expense list from calendar relation, this roller function is going to extract the price show value and sum it up, yeah. Which means it will calculate and give you the total spendings record of that month's combination of check, credit, and cash. And many of you would also like to divide this total use and check the cash flow as well as card usage and this is the reason why I have added these three extra formulas here. These formulas work as tag that indicates whether they are like, they are paid by cash or check or card. So returning back to the monthly report, well, since this is not empty, let me show you this as an example. This credit usage is a roll up that extracting the credit monthly relation value from this expense item. And getting the sum of it. So since there is none of the item that was paid by cash or check in this month, the cash usage and check usage is empty. But uh, if there is an item that was paid by cash or check, there will be a value here as well. Net is the final balance between the spendings and income. The formula looks like here. Please be noted that the properties shown outside is initially set as net as you can see here yeah only net is open so this is showing the price here if you want to change the settings you can just come to the dot 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 button open or close the toggle to show or close the properties and yeah so please find the link to this template in the comment box below and if you have any question while using it please leave the comment there I'll tag and reply.
And as I mentioned at the beginning, you also have the user guide here you can refer on. For people who also need the written guide, please um, yeah, check the page. Thank you for watching this video and goodbye. See you later.